Eleanor was the name of my cousin. We had always dwelled together in the valley of the many-colored grass. Hand in hand about this valley for fifteen years roamed I with Eleanor before love entered within our hearts. The loveliness of Eleanor was that of the seraphim, but she was a maiden artless and innocent as the brief life she had led. One day in tears of the last sad change which must befall humanity, she had seen that the finger of death was upon her bosom, that, like the ephemeron, she had been made perfect in loveliness only to die. But the terrors of the grave to her lay solely in a consideration which she revealed to me one evening at twilight. Then and there I threw myself hurriedly at the feet of Eleanor and offered up a vow to herself and to heaven that I would never bind myself in marriage to any daughter of earth, and I would in no manner prove recreant to her dear memory or to the memory of the devout affection with which she had blessed me, and I called the mighty ruler of the universe to witness the pious solemnity of my vow. And she said to me not many days afterwards, tranquilly dying, that because of what I had done for the comfort of her spirit, that she would watch over me in that spirit when departed, and if so it were permitted to her, return to me visibly in the watches of the night. But if this thing were indeed beyond the power of the souls in paradise, that she would at least give me frequent indications of her presence, sighing upon me in the evening winds, or filling the air which I breathed with the perfume of the censers of the angels. And with these words upon her lips, she yielded up her innocent life, as death cast its long shadow over her. Years dragged themselves along heavily as they dwelt alone in my chamber amongst the gloom and melancholy, but the void within my heart refused even thus to be filled. I longed for the love which had before filled it to overflowing. At length the valley in which our love bloomed pained me through its memories of Eleonora, and I left it forever for the vanities and the turbulent triumphs of the world. I found myself within a strange city, where all things might have served to blot from recollection the sweet dreams I had dreamed so long in the valley of the many-colored grass. My soul had proven true to its vows, and the indications of the presence of Eleanor were still given to me in the silent hours of the night. Then suddenly, these manifestations ceased, and the world grew dark before mine eyes. One bleak evening there came through my window the soft sighs which had forsaken me, and they modeled themselves into a familiar shape and form. Eleanora, cried I. She then spoke in her sweet, gentle voice. Thou art absolved from your vows. You are free, for reasons which shall be made known to thee in heaven. And with a kiss she dissipated upon a cool breeze, and I stood there in silence and felt the heavy cloak of my despair being lifted from my form, and I heard no more from my beloved Eleanor.